promulgation of Nepal's new constitution has reached five years today. In this period, Nepal saw new elections, decentralization of power and institutionalization of issues of inclusion, among others. However, many political decisions taken by the two-thirds majority government and the failure to work towards general public's aspirations has been a dampener to the spirit of the constitution. Good morning, I'm Sarah Sapsanama and these are the headlines of the hour. The highest single-day spike of over 2,000 COVID-19 cases registered. Federal capital records 859 cases. Their tally climbs to 390. Five years since the promulgation of the National Charter, political actors fail in abiding by the spirit of the constitution. The very norms of constitutional dented several times. U.S. Supreme Court justice and an iconic champion of women's rights, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, passes away at the age of 87. And the 13th edition of Indian Premier League to begin in UAE from today. Mumbai Indian up against Chennai Super Kings in the inaugural match. The country witnessed the highest single-day spike of 2020 cases of COVID-19 yesterday. This is the highest single-day record for the number of infections since the first case was detected in February this year. With this, the total number of coronavirus cases in the country has reached 61,593. Speaking at the press briefing yesterday, Spokesperson for the Health Ministry, Dr. Jagish Sir Gautam, informed that out of the 2020 infected, 859 coronavirus cases were reported from the federal capital alone. Kathmandu district reported 698 cases, Lalitpur reported 79 and Bhaktapur 82 cases. Likewise, 191 cases were reported from Chitwan, 118 from Murang, 117 from Surkhet, 86 each from Kaski and Rupandehi, 78 from Bara and 58 cases were reported from Sunsari. Meanwhile, 871 individuals were discharged after registering full recovery in the past 24 hours. With this, the number of individuals registering full recovery has reached 43,820. Likewise, seven individuals succumbed to the virus yesterday, taking the total number of deaths related to COVID-19 in the country to 390. According to the Health Ministry, 894,373 sample tests have been conducted through the PCR method till date, out of which 11,458 swab samples were tested through the PCR method yesterday. A total of 7,737 individuals are in quarantine, whereas 17,383 individuals with active coronavirus cases are in various isolation centers. The ministry informed that 36 individuals are receiving treatment in ventilators, while 173 are in ICUs. Now, the country is observing the constitution day to day. The promulgation of the new constitution has reached five years. The new elections, formation of seven provinces and institutionalization of inclusive issues could be taken as major achievements of the new constitution. However, analysts claim that the political actors have lagged behind to work as per the spirit of the constitution. We have a report. It was on 3rd of Ashwin 2072, as per the Nepalese calendar, that the constitution of Nepal was promulgated. With the release of the National Charter, it was believed that the country would take a giant leap towards development and prosperity, good governance, coupled with social justice. There were rising expectations as for the first time in the country's 250-year-old history, the constitution had led the country to a federal setup. As provisioned by the National Charter, the country now has three levels of government, local, provincial and federal. The constitution has also defined the respective rights of the three governments. However, in the absence of clear jurisdiction, the desired work execution has not been achieved so far. Due to the delay in the formulation of laws by the centre, local and provincial governments have felt more or less handicapped. Likewise, local and provincial governments themselves have not taken initiation in exercising their rights. The fact that provinces 2, 3 and 5 are yet to name themselves speak volume about their indecision. 
The constitution has listed 31 fundamental rights to the citizens of the country. However, many of these rights are yet to be implemented. In the meantime, the governments in the last five years have not hesitated to dent the very spirit of the constitution as individuals who were rejected by public mandate shot into power through the back door. In all these five years, the political power sharing continued to cast its shadow over independent constitutional bodies and academic institutions, raising questions over the credibility of these organizations. A broad gauge rail will operate from Janakpur to the bordering Indian town of Jayanagar as per the agreement inked between the governments of Nepal and India 10 years back. Although the governments of Nepal and India had inked a deal on operating railway service 10 years ago, Nepal still lags behind in terms of technical human resource. We have a report. Following a long wait, the two sets of demo rail designed by Indian government-owned Konkan Railways Corporation arrived in Janakpur on Friday. The two trains will operate from Jayanagar to Janakpur and leading up to Bardibas in Mahottari for a total distance of 69 kilometers on a trial basis. There was a rail procurement deal in May 2019 between the two countries. As per the agreement, two sets of train having one engine and five bogies each arrived in Janakpur earlier on Friday. Of the 69 kilometers broad gauge railway track from Jayanagar in India to Bardibas Mahottari, the first phase will cover a distance of 35 kilometers from Jayanagar to Janakpur. The two trains have been purchased for 840 million barring custom charges. Meanwhile, the local residents from Janakpur were elated by the arrival of the two demo trains as a crowd built up to welcome the arrival of the two trains, even as Nepal lacks technical human resource for the smooth functioning of the railway service. It is expected that there will be regular rail service from the annual festival of Ram Janaki Biba Panchami that falls on 1st December. However, it is not the first time that the trains will operate in the 34-kilometer janakpur Jainagar railway track. The previous coal-driven trains service that started operation in 1937 was halted six years ago. Now, government spokesperson and Minister for Foreign Affairs Pradeep Kewali has said the MCC agreement would be approved after amending a few disputed clauses. Speaking at a press meet held by Press Association Nepal in Butwal, Minister Kewali informed that the task force formed by the party would discuss the MCC report and amend the disputed clauses before its endorsement by the parliament. Gewali further said that the country needed voltage transmitter line for energy development in Nepal and therefore the MCC agreement was given high priority. In a different context, Minister Gewali claimed that the party which was on the verge of a split due to internal conflict has again united to its previous strength. Minister Gewali added that the few remaining disputes would be addressed through the general convention in March. Minister Gyawali also claimed that Nepal-India relations have not soured in recent time, despite such reports in the media and general perception. In our public voice segment, we had asked the local residents in Parvat district, what's your take on government's decision to charge fees for testing of communicable diseases? Let's take a look at what they had to say. Public voice. <laughs> कि त सरकारको लाजारी हो कि त यो संविधान बनाउनेहरुको चाहिँ अलिकति यो चाहिँ बुद्धिहीनता हो निशुल्क स्वास्थ्य उपचार निशुल्क शिक्षा भनेर भनेको छ तर यथार्थमा यो हुन सकेको छैन र अहिले गरिब जनताहरुले सशुल्क रूपमा चेक गरेर पैसा तिरेर चेक गरेर उपचार गर्न परिराखेको छ यो गलत हो टेक ली राखेको छ सरकारले तर चाहिँ जनतालाई चाहिँ जनताले चाहे अनुरूपको चाहिँ सुविधा पाएका छैनन् यो सरासर गलत हो जुन तरिकाबाट सरकारले उ गरिराखेछ यो आफू मोटाउने र जनतालाई मार्ने काम भन्दा अरु केही हैन यो कोरोनाको सरकारले जहरी पनि निशुल्क नै उपचार गर्दिनु पर्छ लकडाउनको समय छ आउने आम्दानीको स्रोत केही छैन भन्नेमाको मात्र बहाना भइछ सुरक्षा जनतालाई मात्र मार्ने कुरा भइछ कहिले 7500 कहिले 5500 कहिले 4000 अब अहिले आएर 2000 मा चाहिँ पीसीआर रिपोर्ट गर्ने भनेर भनिराखेको छ र यो सरकारले के गर्छ के गर्दैन कुनमला के बोल्छ 
जनता त्यतिकै भ्रममा छन् आफैले कानून बनाएको छ निशुल्क सबै सरुवा रोगको निशुल्क भनेर तर फेरि पनि सेवाहरु शुल्क काटिरहेछ Time now for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. The question is how do you evaluate the last five years in terms of implementation of the country's new constitution? Your options are A. Encouraging, B. Satisfactory and C. Difference in spirit and practice. The voting is on. Type NEWS. Select your option A, B or C and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. It's time now for our special segment Media Watch. Long route transport services and domestic flights have resumed in the country from Thursday as per the decision taken by the cabinet meeting held on Monday. The newly appointed government spokesperson Pradeep Gewali informed that the decision to resume the services after almost six months was taken considering the plight of transport and airline businesses and the public. The government has however set a few guidelines for these sectors in resuming services. The government has also allowed hotels and restaurants to operate their services from Thursday. However, the government has maintained the suspension on operating educational institutions, cinema halls, party palaces, and continued restrictions on recreational and sports activities. Meanwhile, the government appointed former Finance Minister Yuvaraj Khatiwara as the Special Economic Advisor to the Prime Minister. Likewise, the government appointed Leknath Koirala as the acting managing director of the Nepal Electricity Authority based on seniority after Kulman Gising's four-year term ended. Meanwhile, the local authorities of the Kathmandu Valley from Thursday considerably eased the prohibitory order imposed in the valley since 19th of August, allowing businesses to operate without restrictions. Vice Chairman of the ruling Nepal Communist Party, Bamdev Gautam, was appointed as the National Assembly member on Thursday. National Assembly Chairman Ganesh Timilsina administered the oath of office and secrecy to leader Gautam. During Thursday's swearing-in ceremony, newly appointed lawmaker Gautam claimed that his appointment was legal as per the constitution. President Vidya Devi Bhandari had appointed leader Gautam as the member of the upper house earlier on Thursday itself upon the recommendation of the cabinet meeting held on Monday. The membership at the upper house was vacant as the tenure of the then finance minister Yuvraj Khatiwara had ended on 13th of February. Leader Gautam had lost in the 2017 general election from Bardia constituency 1. The government decision has been criticized from all quarters for nominating a vanquished leader from the coda that was reserved for public figures based on their special contribution to the society. This is Abhuday Shrestha for Media Watch and Kantipur News Desk. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Have a great day ahead.